Right in the work, bring about healing and reconciliation to our society, uh, our society urgently needed. On Rights and Recourse today, we examine the objectives of civil society groups to what seems to be a misrepresentation of the TRC reparation recommendations by the Department of Justice. Joining us on today's topic are Dr. Hoto Devi, Chief Operations Officer from the Department of Justice, and Dr. Marjorie Jobson, National Director from Kulumani Support Group. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Rights and Recourse. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. The first question probably I should ask you, Dr. Dr. Hoto Devi, what were the initial recommendations of the TRC? There were several recommendations, and I'm sure my colleague from Kulumani would add. But one that I remember more than any other is around the payment um, for reparations. And that includes payment of about 125,000 to victims over a period of five years, if I remember well. I need to indicate, however, uh, when government and when the cabinet and parliament adopted the recommendations, it decided on four recommendations in particular. The first recommendation that they <coughs> adopted uh, was the recommendation on agent reparations. Instead of paying 125,000 over five years to victims, they agreed uh, on 30,000 as a token of appreciation. I suspect that at the time when cabinet made that decision, it was <coughs> informed largely by the resources available uh, to the number of victims. The second one that they adopted was one around symbols and monuments, uh, which led to the construction of the Freedom Park Monument at Tapitasin Memorial and so on. The third one that cabinet then adopted was the one, was one around medical benefits and other forms of social assistance. And lastly, cabinet and parliament adopted a recommendation on community rehabilitation. Is that your recollection, uh, Marjorie jo Dr. Marjorie Jobson? Um, yes, to me, um, the issue that you started asking about was the original recommendations. And I wanted to point out that it's now 18 years since the TRC began. And in the beginning, the sense was that the focus is going to be truth, and the truth will create a pathway to reconciliation. And Amnesty came in and then when you give amnesty to people, you have to also pay attention to the victims. And so originally, um, the recommendations were, actually they were mainly designed by Dr. Iraj Jabedian, the economist, and they were extremely accurate in terms of what is needed to repair what has happened to victims of killings, abductions, torture and severe ill treatment because Kulumani subsequently hired a panel of experts and we, we amazed, to our amazement we found that their um, proposals actually filled the exact needs. You know, if your house was burned down and it was in this part, this township, and it was three bedrooms to replace that house came to exactly what they had worked on. And so we believe that those original recommendations are what we urgently need because when this um, process deviated to a very, very limited um, offering of measures of repair, it actually resulted in thousands of people not being repaired. And that's the legacy of what we live with. And it's something that is very, very possible to address. And so what tends to happen today is we've seen year after year extra opportunities created for the offenders very few offenders came forward and at the same time not a single additional measure even the original measures being given to victims so we we have a situation of very unequal access to justice the department of justice prides itself on you know programs on access to justice but in fact this is probably the one area in which we have failed very dismally in terms of giving access to justice to the people who carried the most severe harm from standing up against a party. Well, we'll come to the rest of the other things, but in order for this fund to have a name, it was called the President's Fund, it d d although it resorted with the Department of Justice. It's called the President's Fund. <coughs> the President then mandated the Department of Justice to implement 
and monitor the implementation of the recommendations of the TRC and consequently the fund had to reside in the Department of Justice. Apparently some reform. of the money came from Treasury but some came from donations. Some came from Treasury, some came from donations. Various countries I think uh, donated money. I remember the Netherlands uh, was, one of those, was one of those countries. How then, in the beginning, this is not the first time we do it, 18 years, as Marjorie said, or that we have been dealing with reparations. How then did the department deal with the reparations, the early reparations, the initial reparations? The department is dealing with the reparations the same way that uh, the reparations were dealt with um, when the reparations started to be paid um, around, I think, from 2003 onwards. The Nation Building and Reconciliation Act, I think it's an act of 1995, does say that before any monies can be used in the President's Fund, there must be regulations approved by the President. And the regulations ordinarily, they will set out the basis upon which money will be accessed and used. In the case of agent reparations, there were regulations that were prepared outlining uh, how the money will be used and that's, that's why there was a proper legal basis to pay victims the 30,000 rand that were paid as tokens of appreciation. Similarly, we have had regulations on exhumations, for example. You know that we are one of our mandates as the Department of Justice was working with the NPA, the Missing Persons Task Team in the NPA, was to find 477 missing people declared by the TRC. Now, every time those people are found, we have found about 98, I think, to date. Every time those people are found, we access money from the president's funds to pay uh, for the reburials and so on. Of course, in certain instances, various municipalities and provincial governments do augment, but we have regulations. Now, as we speak, from the 7th of November, the president approved regulations. We'll come to okay. those regulations. Okay. We'll come to those regulations that are approved on the 7th mm -hmm. of November. The, the one problem I have, though, is that it would seem, listening to the Kulumani support group, that the department has gone. These regulations have opened. Are these regulations changed every year? Or mm -hmm. are they new regulations? that are Because it would seem to me that they have opened a way for revising the recommendations of the TRC? No, there are no there are new, new regulations every year. There were specific regulations for reparations, for the payment of reparations, the 30,000 that were paid as to co tokens of appreciations. There's another different set of regulations for exhumations. There's now a different set of regulations for education. We'll come Basic to that. We'll, we'll come to that. Let's okay. just go to break. We'll come back to that because I want to know whether we are dealing with new regulations here or are we dealing with the original regulations. If you'd like to join us on today's discussion, please tweet us at Rights Recourse or email us at rightsandrecourse.sabc.co.za. At we'll be back after the break. Ask, this is who we are. We are technologically driven. We are unashamedly Afrocentric. We advise you not only on legal matters, but on health issues as well. We bring imagination to life. We celebrate arts and culture and lifestyle. We tackle life challenges head on. We dig deep. We probe. We question. We invite you to take a view from our house. As we tell it without fear, separating fiction from factual. We are the SABC News Channel. All news, all global, all the time. There's a lot of corruption there. What are you doing with that? The, the word corruption is actually misplaced. Any elements of corruption must be rooted out and punished accordingly. Sasko is denying that there's any evidence of such. 
We've heard the allegations about students not assisting uh, the situation. Why do you um, have to be pressurized to do your job, Mr. Mzulu? We spend everything that we can give them by government. It's an excuse. Who's failing you at government? Who's failing us at government? Mm. Who's not heeding your call? The government is the government. Is Dr. Blade in Zimane doing well? With what he has done, we want him to do more. We want him to deliver more. So he's failing. The Minister of Higher Education, uh, don't put words in my mouth. Watch Question Time with me, Mpo Tzedu, Monday to Thursday at 5.30 p.m. on the SABC News Channel. Zoom into Africa. This is Algeria. The president is Mr. Abdelaziz Bouteflika. Algeria got independent from France on 3 July 1914. The population is more than 36 million people. One of the major languages spoken is Arabic. Monetary unit is dinar. Welcome back. Before we continue with our discussion, please note that those wishing to get further information can contact the Department of Justice at 012-315-1801 or visit www.justice.gov.za. Let's continue with the discussion here. I think that information is correct. <laughs> what I wanted to know, my early question was about whether these recommendations or these regulations opened the way, they opened the door to water down the regulations. Marjorie? Right, well... Water down the recommendations okay. of the TRC. If, if you look at the original report of the TRC, the, the report envisaged accommodating all victims of gross human rights violations. Um, President Mbeki did not agree with the program the TRC put in place. And President Mbeki appointed a legal expert from Tanzania who rewrote recommendations. Um, these are the ones that Dr. De Vere is talking about becoming only token reparations, not, re not real repair to victims for what happened to them. And when he announced those on, I think, the 15th of April 2003, he also said, we need this entire country to debate. And as a consequence, um, Kulumani became one of the organizations that convened a national civil society dialogue on reparations which was very well attended by government at the highest level and out of that the recommendation was that this program really should be located in the human rights commission there should really be a victim's desk now we believe that that would have been a much better solution because um, what has happened post-apartheid is that you know, there's been a construction of a victim's charter of rights and those proposals, those clauses in the victim's charter of rights should actually apply to all of these people who were victimized through apartheid uh, security agents mainly. But government has separated out the pre-transition pre, pre victims and created the special category of people who would qualify for those rights in the Victims' Charter. And that has created huge problems because originally um, it was envisaged that we need to heal the people who've carried the greatest harm. If you read the report, it doesn't say we will only uh, recognize the people who managed to reach the TRC, which left our about eight-tenths of the that's people. A, that's another dichotomy, mm. Dr. Dr. DeV, that uh, uh, you are talking about 17,000 uh, uh, recipients or beneficiaries. And uh, groups like Kulumani support group talks about 120,000 because they say they have a list and the, uh, the MK veterans have a list. The military veterans have a list. If I may come in, sir, <coughs> the... The one point that is often forgotten is that the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was, was a commission established by the president to investigate incidents 
of gross human rights violations. Now, any commission in any country, once it has concluded its mandate, it reports to the people who appointed the commission in the first place. Now, in this case, the commission reported back to the president, who then went to table a report in parliament. So once any commission all over the world reports to government, it is up to the government of the day to decide which recommendations are practical to adopt and which are not <coughs> practical to adopt. And in this case, I dare say that when the government, the cabinet of the time and the parliament of the time adopted these recommendations, one of their primary considerations was the availability of resources to be able to fund their uh, uh, recommendations that were put to it. And I think that's a, that's, a, that's a very important point. The second point I would like to make, which we are making, that why we focus only on the 22,000 victims that arise in the reports of the TRC and not the 120,000. Remember the 22,000 victims were victims that were recommended by the TRC itself. It's not something that was recommended by government. The, that number came from the <coughs> TRC itself. And since then, and, and it's important to make the point that all those people were recommended on the basis that they are victims of gross human rights violations. Now, all of us can be victims of apartheid in many ways. But the question is, were we victims of gross human rights violations? I think that's the one question. The second question... Well, apartheid by the United Nations declared apartheid a, uh, a human oh, rights violation. When it was a crime against humanity. A but, crime against humanity. But, but remember, so all of us can claim. I can also claim. Yes, but did you appear in the TRC? <laughs> I don't have to have appeared uh, no, in the no, TRC. But, but in terms of the Nation Building and Reconciliation Act, the people who were supposed to be declared victims of gross human rights violations is only people who appeared before the TRC. Now it is true, I mean... Majority of South Africans among the 53 million of us are victims of apartheid. There's no denial about that. But in this particular case, the commission that was set up by President Mandela recommended 22,000 people as victims of gross human rights violations. Now, the 120,000 that Kulumani uh, claimed to have on his database, majority of whom are not people who appeared before the TRC for a variety of reasons. Now, in terms of us, our mandate as the department, we are only supposed to deal with 22,000 victims. If tomorrow government decides that we need to deal with more victims, be it 120,000 or 53 million, it will be our mandate. We will do it. Let's, see, let's hear what Kulumani says around that very issue of the numbers. Okay, well, you know, we've, we have, because it's being driven by people who felt only a few people managed to present their stories to the TRC and what happened in communities was people said telling our story is the beginning of healing. Kulumani can you please create a mechanism that we can also tell our stories. So we, we went through a whole series of, of forms because it was actually driven by people saying that's the first step being recognized for having made such an important contribution is the first step in healing and you won't know that I made a contribution without knowing my story. So we created a database and we, we created um, forms that people could use to document very specifically using only those four definitions of the Truth Commission because otherwise you could end up in encompassing most of the population as Dr. De Vere said. And um, the issue about the TRC and its severe limitations for victims is that all over the world, pressure builds from the people saying this cannot go on. We have done our best to engage, to hold meetings, to go to the president's office, to write memorandums, and the pressure from the people we'll is come to that. we have to open we'll come to that, this Dr. commission Jobson. I again. Just want to, I just want to go back to something else. Dr. Deville, in a press release by the department it say, last week, it says Parliament has identified four key categories of reparations, namely individual ones of payment, payment of 30,000 rand, which you spoke about, medical benefits and other forms of social assistance, and community rehabilitation. There are all, these are rather broad, as you already pointed out. Uh, can you 
also touch on the deadlines. Apparently, there are serious deadlines when people can, uh, in, your, in answering that question, when people can, can put in claims. Uh, the deadlines that you are talking about refers mostly to the regulations related. There's a category of regu regulations called medical benefits and other forms of social assistance. Within that category, there's a category on basic and higher education. The president issued regulations. The deadline that we are talking about is that from between now and the 7th of February, we wanted people who were victims or who were relatives of victims or dependents of victims or spouses of victims to apply between now and the 7th of February. But the second thing that I would like to say about the deadline is that their applications will be open for people to access that assistance for the next five years. That is from the 7th of November last year to for the next five years. Every year of that, we'll be receiving uh, applications. But I also need to say that if from February next year, we, or if from now we receive an application of somebody starting, for example, in grade R, in basic education, we will be able to finance the education of that particular person until they finish uh, a higher education. So I think that in, is important. In other words, you'll be, you'll, be, you'll be paying for, is it, is it a, a, a daughter or a, a son or a, of a person uh, who was declared a victim? Was declared a yeah. victim. Th th you will pay for the education up to university? Up to university, yes. But only on the closed list. Only the 16,800. Is that true? It's only on the, on the closed list. It is only on the 22,000 victims declared by the TRC. It's not on everybody. Not on everybody. Not, not on, on you. Not on everybody, yeah. Is that what uh, Kulmani Support Group is Absolutely, contesting? Absolutely, because that was the biggest sacrifice people made with the slogan of um, liberation before education. And when you look at our database, every person has the deepest request to complete their education, or at least to do ABET, or FET, or skills training. And so I wanted to point out, you know, that um, at the time th that the movement was beginning with military veterans, Kulumani went to Parliament and we argued for remedies for military veterans at a time when there were only three people from MK actually arguing and they said, sure, we need your help. We subsequently went back to Parliament when the military veterans bill, ben you know, the benefits for military veterans were being argued about three or four years ago. And all the military veterans contacted us and said, we agree with everything you are, are, are promoting as a remedy. If you look now at the website of the Department of Military Veterans, everything that we have asked for is now becoming a benefit for military veterans because they're categorized as a special category because they received military training. Whereas the people who were community defenders and activists in this country are excluded just on the basis of that of that definition and we think that is entirely unacceptable because the struggle was waged not only from the m underground but also by everyday community activists in the country and I mean what has informed the military veterans bill actually comes from Kulumani and the predecessor to Dr. De Vere who was an ambassador um, Mochubela Seku he said he, the solution he has is that the same the same provisions that are being made for military veterans must apply to victims of gross we'll human rights violations. Discussion. We'll continue this discussion, Dr. De Vee. We just have to go to a break. If you'd like to join us in today's discussion, please tweet us at Rights Recourse or email us at Rights, Recourse, uh, at Rights and Recourse at sabc.co.za. We'll be back after the break. Please note, our program today is pre-recorded, so we'll not be taking any calls. Prominent names have been mentioned at the Arms Deal Commission, among them Winnie Matikizela Mandela, Tony Blair and Tony Giorgiades. Terry Crawford Brown has been making the loudest noise. From taking the president to the highest court in the land to grilling witnesses in the first phase of the hearings, 
Commissioners have adopted a tough stance with witnesses, compelling them to back up claims and produce evidence. Do you know those MPs? I know some of them, but really, sir, I would not think it appropriate to disclose their names publicly. Your World, weekdays at 9 p.m. The man arrested in connection with the murder of Senzo Meiwa is planning to take legal action against the police minister. Mbata appeared in the Boxburg Magistrates Court after being in police custody for 10 days. He says police have ruined his life. I'm afraid for my life. His family have conflicting emotions and saddened that he was arrested in the first place. And now their case seems to be in tatters, perhaps underlining the severe pressure they were under to produce a suspect. But what now for the police? Primetime News, daily at 6 p.m. on SABC News. There's an explosion of studies showing that cannabis causes or is related to schizophrenia. I have been uh, using cannabis almost daily for the last 30 years. If it had no side effects and it had no harmful effects, we wouldn't have been sitting here. If cannabis was going to cause me brain damage, I really don't think that from a personal point of view that I would be sitting here today. The fact is that you cannot just do what you want. Watch Newsroom with me, Evan Janssen, weekdays at 9 a.m. on the SABC News Channel. Welcome back. We'll continue telling you that uh, if you want to be uh, wishing to further, to further information on the contact the Department of Justice on 012-315-1801 or visit their website www.justice.gov.za. Let's go back to Dr. Devi. You wanted to respond to something Marjorie said? There's an important point that <coughs> needs to be made clear to the general public out there when they are listening. Our democratic government, since 1994, have expanded in an unprecedented way access to education. Basic education, further education, as well as higher education. We are now living in a country where all South Africans, especially poor South Africans, who enjoy free basic education. So just because the president has approved regulations on basic and higher education, specifically for victims declared by the TRC. It does not mean that South Africans in broad terms do not have access to education. In fact, in the history of our country, our government in the last 20 years have expanded enrollment in education in a way that has never been seen in the history of this country. So it is incorrect to create an impression that just because that the president has approved these regulations for victims declared by the TRC, suddenly all other people don't enjoy access uh, to education. And the same applies to health. We have free basic health uh, in this government for both victims and people who are not victims alike. By the way, on so. the recommendations on housing and health, uh, according to the regulations, you say in your press release that that program is at various stages of development. How far are we from finalizing these programs? The regulations are ready. Uh, the only thing that has been a hindrance in terms of us implementing the regulations on health is that the Department of Health needs to amend the National Health Act so that when public institutions, uh, when people access public institutions for health, they are being covered by the, by the National Health Act. Unfortunately, there's been a bit of glitches in that, and I hope that early in 2015, they will be resolved. Parliament will amend the National Health Act so that uh, victims can access all the, all the public health facilities. The, they can only access public health facilities? It will only be, be public health facilities. In education, is the same. They can only access 
public, public education, public education institutions. And this simply because as government, we cannot, we cannot um, um, give an obligation to private institutions over which we do not necessarily have control. It is only in circumstances where education or health services are not offered by public institutions than, than, that will consider sending people to private institutions. But the regulations, largely, they, they privilege the use of public institutions. Marjorie, you wanted to weigh in there? Um, yes, I would like to. You know, we've been um, studying these educational assistance regulations um, very, very carefully because they were originally published in 2011 and we then submitted together with a number of other organizations, we submitted suggestions around what the gaps were and how the gaps could be filled. Now they were promulgated, as Dr. Devere has explained, on the 7th of November and we have we have looked at the original proposals to which we responded and these proposals and we find that the very serious issues that were raised when we responded um, to a call for public comment have not yet been addressed. Apparently, so the you, new have, apparently you have written a letter to the, Depart to the Minister of Justice which the former Minister of Justice has not responded to. Uh, no, the Minister of Justice responded to us immediately to say he is looking forward to a, a discussion with us as very, very soon, hopefully before December, because things closed down in December until about March. So we, we are looking forward to that. I met with the Deputy Minister of Justice last Saturday. Deputy Minister and Dr. De Vere, since about the 26th of September, have been telling us to look forward to our meeting with the President. And yesterday we were told that the President has no intention of meeting us. So we feel like we've been tossed around because we engaged this president in 2009 and we have, we have had messages put by the, the presidential hotline in his private office from that time. We were promised a meeting on the 2nd of October which got postponed with about one day's notice. And so we were, we were worried why this falls so low down on the president's agenda when it is probably the most important thing that people need now when people are getting very disillusioned with the state of our democracy. Dr. De Vee, apparently uh, there was a, uh, a stakeholders meeting in September. Uh, were groups like Kulumani support group part of that stakeholders meeting or what is a stakeholders meeting in this case? Mr. Mateza and the listeners, I think it's important to indicate that whenever, every time regulations are to be promulgated, we consult stakeholders. When the education uh, regulations that were approved by the president on the 7th of November were crafted and were drafted, they were published in the government gazette for public comment. Not only that, we convened a meeting in 2011 where Kulumani was invited, but not only Kulumani, other interested parties, they were invited to make comments and so on. So the product that you see today on basic and higher education was an outcome of that consultation process. Now, Kulumani must accept that they are one of the many parties that we speak to. So if they don't get 100% uh, attention on the regulations, well, it's a process of give and take. Now, on the 26th of September, on the 26th of September, we, were, we had last year, December, we advertised uh, regulations on community rehabilitation in a draft form for public comment. And then on the 26th of September, after we have considered uh, all the comments, we then convened a workshop of all stakeholders, including Kulumani, to just deliberate on the issues that they've raised. I'm happy to say that we are now in the final stages of finalizing those regulations. So hopefully in the new year, we will be coming here to say the regulations on common rehabilitation are now done. We are implementing. I just wanted to go back to something. I, I know um, uh, Marjorie wanted to respond to that, but I, I need to we need to move forward yeah. very quickly. The question I want to know, there's now a new thing, Dr. Devi, that says the money will be used for infrastructural, municipal infrastructural development, schools construction and improvement, health, social services and skills development. The question is, do these projects not fall under departments 
where these things have been budgeted for. Why now use this money to build schools, to do infrastructure development, when we hear, even yesterday I was listening to a discussion in Parliament, that municipalities divert money that is meant for infrastructure to pay salaries to their employees. I must tell you, uh, Mr. Mateza and the listeners, Kulumani is the one perpetuating the myth that the money in the president's fund will be misdirected for other purposes. Now, what they also did not tell you, that initially they said that we took 500 million out of the president's fund and we gave it to the ANC for election purposes. I don't know now, where you got that now, from. We've now, never seen no, that. No, it was published We've in the Times. They said so, and to date we the are still we are we are still waiting for 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 proof of that from them, so that the law enforcement agencies can come in. But these projects that we are talking about, and I know uh, one of the things they've said, there's a journal called the Daily Maverick, where Ms. Jobson here said that uh, we are we are making up for the shortfall in the municipal infrastructure grant. The truth of the matter is that. The TRC recommended that we need to initiate programs and projects that will contribute to the healing of communities. Dr. Tavi, let's get, let's quick, before you go for, let's get a, 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 a response from Dr. Jobson. Okay, so if we're going to look, just look at the latest proposals uh, from Dr. the Dr. Department. Dr. Jobson, I want you to refute yeah. or agree mm -hmm. with what Dr. Kutzkotso has been saying, what Dr. De Vier has been um, saying. I think Dr. De Vier is defending the use of the victim's reparation money for other purposes than it was originally designed for when there are in our database 104,000 people of which about 90,000 have had no support for the removal of bullets, for major surgery, for prostheses that they cannot pay for themselves, for all I, these I, I things. I hear that. What I want, well, I wanted to d dispute what he said. If you wanted to, you, you, you did try and dispute that earlier in the discussion. Can you can we try and dispute where these comments made by Kulumani in the Daily Maverick or in the Times? Um, a journalist in the Daily Maverick wrote an article saying what is happening to the President's Fund I was asked one question and so what I, I mean there's one sentence there that can be attributed to me. The rest is like the general feeling of the, of the wide public. Public is getting more and more despondent about the direction government is taking because these plans are, if you go to these meetings, our chair people of those, in those townships of Kulumani say this is a complete charade, it is an act. I get calls from the chairpersons of Kulumani saying, I will not participate in something like this where this money is going to be taken to be given to small enterprises to do construction when it's not in the plan of that municipality. There's no budget to equip to maintain or to staff the centres. And the, 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 this money is dedicated to victim repair, things that help victims. The plans that the department has cannot be justified in terms of that framework, in terms of our truth commission that truly set out to heal this nation. And it would be if that money is plundered, as we say, by this Department of Justice, who should not have been entrusted with it, if that was their plan, there is no way that we think we will ever get budgets from the National Treasury, because at the beginning, of just after the TRC, there was a boom in South Africa. There is a lie that it was impossible. Even the TRC said it will take three billion rand to do everything we need to do. They didn't do it. There was money at that time and now they're pleading poverty. And now they should not steal that money from victims who deserve the credit and the recognition of this government that they brought to power. And I, we feel but, extremely but strongly all, about all, that. With all due respect, uh, Dr. 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 is accusing us Dr. of Dr. Dr. To Dr. 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 money. Dr. I think, I think you need to say more of that. Don, Dr. Devi, no, we'll no, come back to that. No, no, we'll give you an opportunity. Us we'll give you an opportunity. No. We'll give you an opportunity. No, no, she Dr. Dr. Devi, Dr. Dr. we'll give you an opportunity important. to respond she when we come back from the base. She said we gave 500 million to the ANC. I no, no, no. no. Not Dr. Devi, Dr. Devi, we will we are to steal we'll give you an opportunity. If you'd like to join us on today's discussion, please tweet us at Rights Recourse or email us at rightsandrecourse at sabc.co.za.
say, please note our program today is pre-recorded, so we'll not be taking any calls. We'll be back after the break. BASCOM can miss a deadline for a crucial step towards turning on the Madupi power station. But the power utility says it will probably meet the December the 24th deadline. We're looking good. We've come through three days obviously of load shedding, which uh, has unfortunately been necessary, but it's be been useful to have built up our reserves for the coming week. Shares of private hospital group Netcare jumped up today and closed on a high after the company reported increased annual profits. The hospital group is also taking steps to aggressively reduce its dependence on ESCOM due to increasing power outages and rising costs. We'll be reducing our energy needs by some 35% over the next 10 years and our cumulative savings of our forecast electricity bill will be in the region of a billion rand. So we're doing something very constructive uh, about the challenges we're facing at the moment. That's Business News, weekdays at, at 6 p.m. on SABC News. Welcome back. Uh, Dr. DeVere, you wanted to respond to what Ms. Uh, Dr. Jobson was saying. No, jo Dr. Jobson is really perpetuating a myth that the money is being directed, that we have plans for infrastructure. The truth say, is the TRC report said we need to initiate programs or projects that will contribute to the healing of communities. And in truth, what we have done in a number of areas, we did it in KwaZulu-Natal, we have done it in the Free State, we have done it in Limpopo, we have done it in Gauteng, we are now going to do it in Northern Cape, in fact, throughout the country. We consult communities on Dr. this matter. Dr. Tavi, uh, I, with due respect, do these regulations take into account, on all of these deviations, do they take into account that in the provisions of the Public Finance Management Act, as it states clearly that because of the President's Fund was established by the, for the sole purpose of reparation, is then the, the PFMA says very clearly you can't use money budgeted for something else on something else. But that's why every time we have to use money, there must be regulations sent to the President for approval. That's why. But secondly, one of the things that uh, Dr. Jobson hardly mentions is that including on the 26th of September, including on the 26th of September, we gave a financial report on the President's Fund. She has those reports. She knows that those reports have been unqualified by the Auditor General. In fact, the Auditor General has gone to Parliament to assure Parliament that despite the campaign that Dr. Jobson and her friends have started, that uh, we are plundering uh, uh, the president's fund. The Auditor General has assured Parliament and assured Dr. Jobson that there is nothing amiss about the president's fund. Every cent is being spent according to the regulations that have been approved. Dr. Jobson, before you respond, I want you to respond uh, around this question of what is the objective of ASIKA AD campaign and what does it entail? Okay, ASIKA AD is a campaign to say we are going to leave this country deeply damaged if we don't go back and finish this excellent process that we began and that process is about for once giving equal justice to victims in this country unlike the benefits that keep being offered to perpetrators in this country and equal justice means that there has to be a program of an inclusive well-constructed program of reparations for everybody who fitted the TRC definition, not just because there was an administrative decision that this government refuses to alter to say it's only a body of about 100,000 people who need this help. 
we can do that. And I'm telling you, this issue is going to come back and bite this government because these are the people who are feeling more and more betrayed by our present government because they, made the, they carried most of the sacrifices, along with the military veterans who are about 57,000 who are now beginning to be taken care of. And the regulations that Dr. De Vere is proposing and they're wanting to get endorsed and adopted are going to deviate money that is meant to do that job of repair. Dr. Devi, are you, are, you, are you surprised why people are skeptical with government proposals regarding using money in other projects which they were not budgeted for? Which people? The important question in this regard is which people? I'll give you an example. <coughs> when we consult people on community rehabilitation, we consult stakeholders in the community. We have a community meeting which is public, every member of that community is participates in the deliberations of the meeting. At the end of that meeting, the community itself elects its own steering committee that we work with. And in those meetings, the community chooses the projects. The Department of Justice does not impose projects on the, on the, on the communities. And I want to give the example of Mamelodi. I want to give the example of Mamelodi. The Mamelodi people, they chose that we need to construct a multi-purpose community center And a statue for, for Solomon Matlango. No, no, that has been done. That, has been yeah, done, that yes. is separate, but they, they, need want, a community center they now. now need a multi-purpose community center. Can you believe that a member of <coughs> Kulumani support group is in the steering committee of Mamelodi? Is there? So when, Komuni, when Kulumani says we have 100,000 people, South Africans are unhappy and so on, can I, can, I, can I count for you the number of communities we've been to? I would like to count for you because, you see, when they create this myth that the people are opposed, it's important that I mention the communities that we have been to. Say, in Limpopo, we've been to Lulegani and Hamatlala. In Gauteng, we've been to Alexandra and Mamelodi. In the Free State, we've been to Tumahole and Tabum. In KwaZulu Natal, we've been to Mpopomeni and we've been to Bambai. People are not opposed. In fact, he, uh, on the 26th of September, me, Dr. Jobson was there in the workshop when people were saying, please finish these regulations quickly so that we can get going Kulumani with implementation. Said we can't accept these regulations. The majority of, well, Kulumani said so and it was and a all the coalition no, no, members. It was the minority view. It was not the, the minority because you packed the meeting with members of the ANC. I can you promise see, you, you see, what happened. If you are opposed to the ANC, say you are opposed to the ANC. Don't say you are opposed I'm to the regulations and so on. Oh, sorry, we will no, we'll continue. To the we'll continue the discussion. Dr. Dr. Robson will give you an opportunity but to respond. But I'm saying people in the community will give you support we'll this. We'll okay. give you an opportunity Victims to respond. Victims do not support it. Dr. Robson will give you the, uh, an opportunity to respond. If you'd like to join us, please continue to tweet us at the right three course or email us and give us your views uh, about this program and many other programs of the SABC. Please note, our program today is pre-recorded, so we'll not be taking any calls. We'll be back after the break. former blood basket of Africa, playing host to Sadiq leaders. I feel humbled and yet greatly honored at being appointed the chairman of Sadiq. When I was a student, Harvard was only my visible college, my former classes. 
but I was also a student in, in an invisible cult. The outbreak in West Africa is the world's deadliest to date. It's centered on Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone with cases also reported in Nigeria. Catch news at 8, 7 days a week. Be informed. Welcome back. Before we continue with our discussion, please note that those wishing to get further information, contact the Department of Justice on 012-315-1801 or visit their website www.justice.gov.za. Dr. Jobson, you wanted to respond to what uh, Dr. I, DeVee was I, saying. I do want because actually I know the inside story of what is happening in these so-called community consultations and I can tell you stories from each of the sites government has been to, it should also be known that the Treasury gave the Department of Justice 20 million rand to go and carry out these consultations. We cover tens and tens of I mean, communities way beyond what the Department has done with a budget. If we had 20 million rand, we could do such good work. The Department, of course, has the privilege of getting these kinds of resources that we don't have. And so, for instance, if I can tell you the story of Tabong in Valkum, in Tabong, the invitations only went to the Premier's office, to the MEC's office in the, in the province, to the ANC branches. And, and the only reason we learned about that meeting was because our chairperson in Tabong works in the Machabeng municipality and he saw it come across the desk. And, and uh, we have always said to Dr. De Vere, can you please let us know so we can print out from our database all the real victims who have been neglected by the ANC. I'm, I, I recognize the ANC as the ruling party of my country, but you need to know that the people who are coming to these meetings have actually never s sought to try and help victims who are, are deeply, deeply hurt and are wounded by what happened to them. And so that's the problem that we have with these community meetings. The people who are on the committees, a very interesting thing happened after two meetings in Tabong and after we met some of the steering committee meetings, when the people, they'd all been brought and they'd all been paid for by the Department of Justice and Kulumani people got no support from the department to attend their meeting. We paid for ourselves Before to be I there. Before I go to the next, I just want Dr. Tavi to respond to the kind of things you were saying uh, in, in, in your last statement. Sir, we are a national government department and being a national government department, it is important that at all times we have to work with other tiers of government, in this case provincial governments and municipalities. It will be a very strange day that when we go to Tabung or to Mahole, uh, we go there without alerting the Premier of the Free State and we go there without talking to the relevant municipalities. But you leave out the victims. It is, it is very, yeah. very strange. And when we say to, when, what we say to those people is that give us the stakeholders in this area that we can speak to. For example, in Tumahul, you have a member of Kuluman, Mr. Letshaba. I can tell you categorically that the municipality in Tumahul never, never stopped Dr. Mr. Dr. 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 from attending Dr. the meeting. Dr. David, with due respect, if you have the details of Kulumani, why did you send an invitation to Kulumani? We said, we invite. And we've you never got an invitation. Do you know what we do, Mr. Mates? We even go with a loud hailer throughout the community to tell each and every member of the community to come. Now, if Kulumani has a footprint that they always claim to have, uh, I can tell you, at least in Mamilodi and Tumahole, I have seen members of Kuluman. In fact, one of the stakeholders that, that we met with, with we, uh, in, in Mamilodi were about four or five ladies who said they belong to Kuluman. And they were invited to the public dialogue that we had. So it is entirely not true to say we don't invite Kuluman. Uh, Dr. Jobson, accident Dr. They get Dr. There. Jobson <laughs> herself has just told you that on the 26th of September, we had a workshop, they were invited. You see, one of the things he doesn't mention, when they were invited, they were insisted on having 22 people in the workshop, and we agreed. 
The question I want to ask, Dr. Thompson, yes. what is the mm -hmm. way forward? Where are we going to now? What's the way forward on this issue? Well, I think that um, there is a massive movement on the ground of people who are saying, this isn't the ANC we voted for. This ANC has to correct its path. And the first thing where it went, lo where it lost its I way. I think let's refer to the department. Well, let's leave the ANC okay. out. Well, it is very much a sense because most of, you know, n eight out of nine provinces are ANC managed. And people, people see it as a failure because that is the party they voted for to look after their interests and to care about them. So for us, the way forward is that we, we do not comprehend how this government can, can choose to neglect and abandon the people who brought them to power when it is actually only like 100,000 people who need help. And how is it possible that you, you provide special measures for military veterans long after Kulumani was helping the victims of gross violations and you have still never solved the problem, never answered any of the proposals that have been given we, we work with other organizations. Dr. De Vier talks. Dr. Dr. I know you have the South African Coalition of Trans Transitional yes, Justice. Exactly. The question I want to ask is, in a newspaper report, you have been quoted as having said, if the Justice Department tries to go with the closed list, there will be a court case and they will lose. Are you going that route? Yes, of course. We are preparing, but we've, we've had ad advice from international lawyers all over the world who are very worried that this government has forsaken the victims of apartheid crimes which were something recognized all over the world and we really hope that there will be a change of attitude and a change of heart Can in, you give in a final word to Dr. De Vee? Um, our democratically elected government will do everything in its power to meet its mandate not only in terms of delivering basic services but also in implementing the recommendations of the TRC and we are on the march and we'll continue on that march. Well, this has been Rights and Recourse. This program is repeated at 10 tonight and at 5 on Monday morning. From all of us in the studio, thank you to our guests and uh, our loyal viewers. All the best for 2015. <laughs>